Hey, what's up, Rattlers? So while I'm down here in Florida for the Daytona Reptile Expo, I stopped by Abby Melva Studio's place, and she's going to show us some amazing ATBs, those are Amazon tree boas, and talk a little bit about what morphs and phases there are, and a little bit about their care. I'm Dave Kaufman, and I am obsessed with reptiles, and I have been since I was nine years old. 25 years later, I made a trilogy of award-winning movies about them. Now my life is all about touring the world in search of them in wild places and checking out some of the most awesome breeding facilities and reptile expos while I'm at it. So come with me and join my reptile adventures. At Zilla, we are dedicated to the innovation of caging, lighting, and equipment solutions that provide proper husbandry for your pet's long and happy life. To see our entire catalog, visit ZillaRules.com. All right, Abby, so you have some of the most amazing ATBs in the world. I'm totally not being biased. So tell us what you got there. This is the one and only Dragonheart. He is um, a calico Amazon tree boa. So Amazons are pretty cool. They have morphs, they also have phases, they're polymorphic. So this is an actual morph of an Amazon tree boa. So the cool thing about um, Dragonheart is that he actually came from two completely normal parents. Um, one was a wild caught female and the other one I think was also wild caught or captive bred, I'm not 100% sure. Actually, and honestly, we're not even sure 100% how the calico gene works. All we know is that um, when you breed a visual to a normal, 50% of the babies do end up being calico. But that being said, there is now the evidence to suggest that you can still get calicos from normal looking animals. And um, his mom is the perfect example of that. So mom and dad are both normal. Um, one is a red phase, one is a yellow phase. And half of the litter turned out to be calico. Not quite like him, but they were definitely calico. So with ATBs, it's, you know, you never know what you're gonna get when they're born. That's exactly right. Um, and that's kind of one of the main reasons why people are drawn to this species is because you can, they're kind of like crusty geckos in the sense that, you know, I mean, you can kind of get a guess of what you're going to get, but you never quite know. It could be look like, uh, it could look like mom, it could look like dad, it could be something in between, or it could just end up coming out like this. So you just never know. So I have quite a few Amazons in here, adults, some of them are even in shed, and I'm going to show you exactly what their normal personality is. Um, generally with Amazons, if you don't mess with them, they don't care. Um, I've been able to do complete substrate changes on these adults that are in here with them in the cage, and they could care less. So I, I kind of want to show that to you guys, that they have, they do get a bad reputation, sometimes it's deserved. Um, I do have a couple of adults here that um, it doesn't matter what time of day it is, if I walk past that cage and she sees me, she's not going to be a happy camper. But for the most part, these guys are very chill. So this is Dragonheart's mom here. Yep, so as you can see, she is not a visual calico. She was, uh, she's more like a burnt orange red and she was bred to a, a yellow male and half that litter came out calico. So she's kind of a question mark and I know of one, maybe two other normal type females that have also thrown calico babies. So we're still just trying to figure out exactly how it works. But what I wanna do is demonstrate for you exactly what their normal temperament is. She's awake, she's fully awake. She knows that I'm here. Um, She's actually in shed right now, so she's doing a lot of soaking with the AC running. It's just been horrible. But basically, um, and this is kind of Amazon basics, really. You want to try and keep the humidity about 75%. So you'll notice with these cages, they actually have um, adjustable vents in the back. This is all, there's very little gaps here in the front. I can control what the humidity should be. But with the AC running, it just completely dries out the air. So right now it's just, look at that. It is just way too dry in here. So that's why she's soaking in the in her bowl. But so, I mean, I'm in here misting pretty much every day. She's awake. She knows that I'm here, but she's just pretty chill. Look at that. She didn't care. And this is what most Amazons are like. Now, I mean, most, most Amazons, I probably can't, you know, head boop them. But um, at the same time, I mean, I can still reach in there and do what I need to do. So you're not wearing the glove to protect your hand against bites. You're wearing it to protect your hand against poop. <laughs> I mean, doesn't everyone? <laughs> uh. Now this is Ember. She's asleep. And if I were to wake her up right now, she would pretty much just adjust herself so her head is peeking out so she can see what's going on. She'll see that it's me and then she will immediately not really care at all. So I can just come in here and do what I need to do to spot clean. I can change out and fill her water bowl, which I'll probably end up doing it anyway. And 
on the next. So these perches are really interesting and they, they, they look functional and homemade. Yep. Uh, basically what we're noticing with Amazon tree boas as opposed to other arboreal species where ETBs, um, even chondros, they like to kind of perch themselves on a single and you'll notice that they kind of wrap themselves around like a single perch. With Amazons, we've noticed that they like to try and support as much of their body weight as possible. Um, so what I do purchase for them, I try to give them more hammock style perches than traditional style perches. Um, in the wild, these guys actually have the largest range of any other species in their genus. And so these guys will utilize every inch of the cage that you put them in. Um, and they are active hunters. They're not like other snakes where they are more ambush predators. These guys are active hunters. And something else that I like about using the uh, the plastic mesh with the PVC, I mean, it doesn't have to be this way, but it's super easy to just blast it with some disinfectant, blast it with the hose, and then you're done. It really depends on how in-depth you want to get with your Amazon tree boa keeping. If you just have one or two, you could probably go through and use um, a Zilla front opening cage. Um, you mod modify it that way. I've seen plenty of people do that and it works out very well if you know what you're doing and you know, that's what the forums are for and we'll help you out with that. But cages like this are custom built so you're looking at about 250 on up for a cage like this with all the bells and whistles. And then how much did it cost in your materials to make your perches? Each perch is probably like two bucks. That's what I was kind of thinking, yeah. yeah it's Pretty it's, cheap. Yeah, it's very cost effective and especially for someone that has, like myself, 30 plus Amazons, to, to go in there once a week and just clean everybody out, clean all the substrate out, and then disinfect the perches, disinfect the bowls. I need something that's going to be quick and effective. Right. Of all the Amazons I've ever owned, I've only been tagged by two, and consistently. And this guy always manages to sneak in there and tag me when I least suspect it, because he's a little sneaky one. Now this is a, he's a called a lavender garden phase. So something that we're noticing with um, garden phase Amazons is um, they don't all look the same. If you pay really close attention to um, a Halloween phase garden versus some of the other gardens, you'll notice that they've got a little bit of an undertone to them. So what we're seeing is um, garden phase Amazons that have a lot of red to them have more of a red undertone and it makes them look purple. So you'll also get Amazons that look more pink. They have a lot of orange undertones, so they will throw orange babies. And you've got Amazons that are garden phase that are more olive colored. They have a yellow undertone, so it makes them look green. So based on what their undertone colors are, you can kind of expect to see those color babies if you pair them up with a colored, you know, mate. So something that we've noticed with Amazons is, you know, when you breed something in captivity, chances are they tend to get a little bit more calm. Um, what we do notice is that the temperament of the mother tends to, you know, get passed down to the babies. So in Merlot's case, she's one of the chillest Amazons that I have. Pretty much all of her babies ended up being very chill, regardless if they were calico or not. But it's kind of hit or miss. Sometimes you'll get lucky, and if you breed them and you start working with them early, you can get some pretty calm ones. Um, even if they're not calm at birth, if you start working with them when they're babies, they tend to get used to people but it's a fun line between knowing the personality of the snake. So you just have to know if they're gonna be up for that and just accept that there could be a chance that the snake is not gonna to tolerate being handled often. Right, right, no matter how hard you, exactly. no matter how much you work with them. Exactly. You know, they just, every snake has a personality just exactly. like people. And snakes just tolerate humans. So oh, never forget that, you know, they are just wild animals and at best, you are a weird worm tree. That's exactly right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Welcome to Amazon tree boas. I mean, if they're happy, they're pretty much just like our boreal ball pythons. <laughs> All right, Rattler, so that's what ATBs look like in artificial light, but right now we're going to head outside in the hot Florida tropical sun to see what ATBs really look like under natural sunlight. This is a red tiger Amazon tree boa. So the tiger morph is an actual morph. The red is just a phase. So you can get this morph in red, or orange, or yellow, or even garden phase, but the stripe is what we're looking at here. This stripe that comes all the way down the dorsal is indicative of the tiger morph. This is a paradox Amazon tree boa. Um, there aren't a whole lot in existence. We don't really know what the full method of inheritance is. 
Uh, she was produced by Adam and Amber Harris. I'm very lucky to have one of these in the collection. They do an amazing job. But something that we're noticing with the Paradox gene in Amazon tree boas, at least from what we know so far, is the method of inheritance is not the same as Paradox in other species. So when you're talking about Paradox, usually the basis of that is when you breed it to something else, you might get a Paradox, you might not. And you can repeat the pairing multiple times and you may only get one Paradox in four pairings. With these guys, um, we're actually getting paradoxes, I think almost out of every litter that they're being paired to, but we just have to do a little bit more research on that. We're just not 100% sure yet. It's a gorgeous snake. Yeah, she is. So a snake this size is uh, roughly how old? Uh, I would say roughly two to three years old, depending on how often it was fed. So um, I'm kind of pushing towards three, but I'm gonna put a little bit more meter to bones first before I think about breeding her, just to be safe. And what, what age typically is breeding for ATBs? Um, I've seen them bred as early as three, but it kind of depends. If the parents were bigger, sometimes you can get away with breeding them at three, but I still prefer to go about four. Yeah, yeah. So three and four is generally the age that snakes, most snakes reach sexual maturity, so ATBs are no exception. Right, especially since they're live bearing. you got to be really careful. About right, that. right. And how long is gestation? Um... With these guys, I usually like to go at about day 130, but I've seen anything between 116 days up to 137 days. Jeez, I thought so. 60 days to wait for ball python eggs was bad. Yeah. <laughs> this is Nero. Uh, Nero is an adult male Amazon tree boa, so his counterpart is actually bigger than he is. We have actually seen females get up to about, I would think, almost seven feet. Um, so he is exceptional. This is a hypo Amazon tree boa. So what we know, and that name is probably going to change based on the way that their inheritance is, uh, if you breed two hypos together, you will actually get leucistic Amazons, blue-eyed leucistic. And these guys are a proven pair. They have produced Lucy's already. So I'm actually just trying to see if the female will drop Lucy's again this season. So something that I've actually had to explain to people is the difference between a yellow phase Amazon and what the hypos look like. And now that he's in the sun, I hope you guys can actually see this a little bit better. But uh, hypo Amazons are pretty much almost translucent. You'll see where he normally would have pattern. It's actually white all through here, um, as opposed to any sort of other pigmentation that would normally be there. Uh, versus a yellow Amazon, you'll still, I mean, they're more of like a marigold or a golden color. These guys are just translucent. That and their eyes are very, very green. So I actually have uh, two pairs of hypos. They've both been put together. Um, their original owner did tell me that they're ninja breeders. So uh, he actually got Lucy babies and he never saw a single lock out of these guys. And so that's exactly where I'm at right now. I've never seen a single lock, but he said just to keep an eye on the female and we'll see what she drops. If she does drop, we're looking at babies probably in November. Nice. All right, so next time I'm down, we're going to have to do a follow-up episode. With some Lucy. With some Lucy's. That would be amazing. Yeah, would All be right. Nice. Abby, thank you so much for having me out here to see your ATBs. These guys are amazing. Abby has a bunch of these for sale. If you're interested, comment below. She'll get back to you. These are awesome, awesome ATBs. So before we end this video, I just want to give a shout out to HCI. Abby, tell them what it's all about. Conservation, guys. Seriously, without conservation initiatives, you would not be able to enjoy the animals that you have in captivity. So even if it's not HCI, there's several good organizations that you can donate to, and I highly suggest doing it. Don't forget US ARC. They are fighting for right. your rights. Uh, a portion of all of our proceeds does go to conservation and or U.S. ARC, so definitely keep that in mind. Give till it hurts, guys, because these organizations make it possible for us to do what we do. So like this video, share this video, comment below, subscribe when you do, hit that bell so you never miss an upload. And until the next adventure, love the planet, feed your upheld session, and rattle on. on.